Hello, this is for Bioscience 103 at Merritt College. It's a training video on how to start up the Leica SP8 confocal microscope, start the software, and then get a GFP image on triple stain BPAE cells. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen here, and you're going to double click on it to start the software. This little window here comes up and just starts telling you what it's doing. It's basically initializing the machine. And eventually we'll have a choice point. We want machine configuration and DMI8. You have to hit OK. Now, microscope stand. Make sure here that the microscope stand has nothing in the way. You want to have removed the cover by this point and then you hit yes, and then the microscope stand will move. Okay, now I'm gonna find the sample, which you should have seen on another video, but I'm gonna do it again. Basically the sample is here, right? It's upside down. You wanna make sure the objective lenses, which are underneath here, objective lenses should be 10X. That's here on a little lens icon, it says 10. Then you go up to the next icon, there should be BF that has like contrast, like a moon with a contrast light and dark on it. That should be BF and TL shutter should be yellow. Then the very top, the TL axis should be clicked and that allows all the light to come through, okay? So now I use this here. I'm going to move the sample this is doing up and down. Now I want to go left and right, which is the bottom one. I go find the letters. I said that in the other video. You find the letter on the white part of the sample. Okay, right there, the white part. In Vitrogen or whatever the label on the slide is, okay? I bring it into focus with this. You could also use Z is focus also, this is focus, it's Z, and this is focus. Um, and it's moving the objectives up and down, that's the focus. Now I have it, so then I'm going to move the sample back to the middle of the cover slip, which is where my samples are. Now I go into the computer and now I run everything on the computer, okay? We have our folder set up for where we can put our pictures into, which is great. We have the format section is very important. And when we do advanced things, we'll get here. We're going to stay at 512. Where instead, this thing is also very important. That's how we're going to move and control a Z stack. But first, I want to turn on the laser and find the sample. Okay. So to find the sample, we need to do Z stack or Z position. And um, down here, for whatever reason, it starts at Z Galvo. We don't want Z Galvo. So change this under Z stack to Z wide. Now I can move the stage with the computer. The focus, or sorry, the objectives can focus up and down with the computer. Okay. We are on 10X here. If we wanted to have a different objective, we would change it here. We're staying on 10X. Now I want to turn on the lasers. These are our lasers. We have a 405 nanometer laser, a 488 nanometer laser, a 552 nanometer laser, a 638 nanometer laser, and those are our four lasers. The easiest way to turn them on is to tell the computer what we want to do. And that is this little icon right here. Configure the beam path with the dye assistant. The dye assistant means what is our fluorescent dye? Our fluorescent dye today is, we have that sample actually has three of them. I'm just gonna do one, the GFP, okay? So I go in here and I hit this little three dots and recent ones come up and what I want is eGFP. And it, that means enhanced green fluorescent protein. That's from another sample, but eGFP works for any green fluorescent protein. I click that. It's going to give me this little map and I'm going to say, yes, I want that. It's going to, if you wanted to use a certain detector, that's this. 
You can use PMT, which is photo multiplier two, or you can use, use HYDE, H-Y-D, which is the hybrid detector. I don't really care which one you use. It's going to choose PMT automatically. I'll just let it do that. This is EGFP. This is telling you about the peaks, which doesn't matter because we're just doing one color. And then I hit apply. Now it's going to turn on the laser. Give me laser power. Turn on the detector. Make the beam path all work. And then it says a question here. If we use this laser, 488, we have to turn it on. I go, yes, of course I want it turned on. Now, it's weird. This little, this is the laser power, this little icon here. It's the red 488 is tied to it. You can see 488 down here at the bottom. If you wanted things bigger, also up here at the top left, um, it'll make, I'm going to make it as big as I can. There. Now the fonts are bigger. It was a little small before. Okay, that's this at the top left. You could, sorry, you probably could have done that earlier. Anyway, um, this is visible 488. You can see I'm going to, the power is this 1.00. I'm going to turn the power up to about, um, you can drag it up, up and down. You can use the scroll to, the scroll option is the best. It goes slowly up and down the numbers. You put the cursor over it and just use the scroll button and it goes much more fine, smaller increments up and down. Or you can just type it in. You can double click on the number here and I'm just gonna go to 10. Okay, we're at 10. Now this yellow, sorry, orange line says that our laser is working. We'll explain what these mean later. It's going down to the specimen and back up, goes through a beam splitter here. And that's what all, that's what all of this, all of these lines and arrows and icons are for, okay? Down here is the detector. The detector we're gonna use is PMT2. And it's on already because we use the die assistant. It's going to collect all of the information from 493 nanometers all the way up to 778 nanometers. And I could close this down if I wanted. I could say, nope, only I only want you to do green, which would be GFP, or you can leave it open. And because we're using just one color, it doesn't really matter. But this means we say, no, I only want the fluorescent green area. This little white peak here is the fluorescent green area that I'm talking about, okay? So the 488 laser is this dashed line. That's the excitation wavelength from the laser up here. And then this is the photomultiplier tube absorbance. I'm gonna turn the gain too high because I wanna see everything, but you don't want this gain that high when you take the picture. But right now you crank it up so we can see the sample. And then you go down here and you hit live. And over here, picture starts showing up. Now I'm going to either use this Z stack and I do Z fine. I don't, I don't want, I don't want fat. I don't want coarse. You want Z fine. And you can go up and down looking for a sample. You also should look at the laser. I'm seeing a blue laser. The 488 is a neon blue. That's the laser color. That's the excitation. And so now I am going up and down with my Z stack. See the Z position number here? I'm controlling that with the Z dongle. You can also use on the board in front of you, the little below the display, the monitor, is a series of knobs. One of them says Z position. You can also use that. The numbers, the number on the Z position matches the computer number. The computer number is here, Z position. Okay, so now the laser is going. I just want to find my sample. Where is my sample? I'm going to go down with the Z position because I focused sort of high up. I think it's down near 1379. So I'm just gonna go down with Z. 
And I'm looking at the monitor and whenever I see some green flash, that's where the sample is. There we go. See, there's some, well, this is gray, uh, green. Uh, this is gray color. So now that's my sample. And I'll show you that it is green by the color. The photo multiplier two, two here is gray and I wanna make it green. So I click on this little icon here. Oh, wait, let me hit stop. Click on this and these green colors come up and I click on green and now go back to live. Now it's all green. Okay, so I'm gonna to get to the middle of these green. So these are a bunch of cells, the cells we want. It's great. All the green fluorescence is there but it's too um, bright and I'm also zoomed out. So I'm like, okay, I now, I'm in the middle of my sample. I found my sample, the laser is working, the detector's working, perfect. Hit stop. You don't wanna keep just zapping your sample with the laser. Now, a um, couple things. I wanna to go to 20X. Oh wait, that's immersion. Oh no, that's right. I got to stay on dry. Okay, so I'm going to stay on 10x dry. And um, you can take a picture like this, and that's okay. Or you can zoom in. I'm going to zoom in, use the zoom in factor 20. Let's see what happens. Ooh, it's a little too much. I'll go back. Maybe I'll do zoom in of 10. Oh, that's still too much. Zoom factor of five. That's pretty good. I got about one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven cells. That's great. Okay, now we're there. And what I'm gonna do is now lower my gain. See the gain is making it too bright. So I make the gain 800, which is where a nice starting point. The gain is how sensitive the detector is. And you may think that it's, not very bright, and we can adjust that laser later. Okay. Now we've got the samples we want. We're going to look at them. I'm going to make a Z stack. So I go over to the Z stack here. You can see this position. We're live because the red button is next to stop, meaning that we're going. We hit stop if we want to stop. I don't want to stop. Take my Z position, and I'm going to go down. Watch these numbers here, the Z position numbers. I'm using one of my dials and I'm gonna go down until my sample is all gone. Okay, now you'll see on the screen, there's no more green samples. There's maybe a little fringes, but we're now at the, the cell is this and we're at the bottom of the cell. So that's the bottom of our images. We're going to do a Z stack, which means we go through the whole cell with a series of optical sectioning, but we need the bottom one. So now I say begin here. I hit this begin button. Okay. Now I just, everything's still going live. I'm going to now scroll or scroll up. I'm using my Z position on my bar. You could also use the white um, um, little joystick. And now I just go through the sample sort of quickly. I'm, it's just live. I'm not gathering, I'm not saving information. Okay, so I've gone through it now and um, now about all the green is gone. And so I've gone from no sample at the bottom, no green color. I went through the sample and now I'm at the top where there's no more green GFP. And then I'm gonna hit end, okay. Now I've set my sample size there. I'm going to hit stop. And what does it say? That's only five steps. See here down at the bottom, it says five steps. And um, which just means it's going to take five pictures. So let's see what happens. Now you hit start. And since it's only five pictures, it's going to scan through. You can see it's scanning through five different pictures. It's done. I go back to projects. Oh, right, projection. Projection is the name for maximum projection. You go down to projection and it says maximum here. It's the same thing as up here. There's a maximum projection, but this one will automatically save it. If you go through process projection, 
apply. Okay, now it just took all those optical images and, and compressed it down to one. Now we have, back in our open projects, we have the process picture and the series picture, okay? And then you can do other types of things you want with it, but that's how you get a simple Z stack. If I wanted to make a bigger Z stack, um, I could, I'm back here, I could change this and make it a bigger format. And then I could also go down to the um, Z step size, or I could take a number of steps. Let's say I wanted to do 10 steps. It would just make each step a little smaller. So maybe I'll get a little information. So let's try that. I'm going to make my gain 850 and start another Z stack. Now it's doing 10 slices because I told it to. And it's going to be a little bit brighter because I bumped up the gain a little. Bumping up and down the gain is better than laser power because the gain is just the detection sensitivity and doesn't bleach it more or less. If you crank up the laser power, you might bleach your sample more. But now it's finished here. You can see time remaining. It's all done. I'm going to go back to my open projects. There's now a new Z stack. So we're here on this. And that's what's shown over here. And I can drag this up and down. And those are my individual slices. OK. And then I process. I'm on series two. I go to process. I hit apply. I get my maximum projection. And now it compresses everything. OK. So now it's taken the Z stacks and compressed them. And then if you wanted to export these, you could Go down here, export as a TIFF, because you're always going to want a TIFF, right? And um, it's going to do users desktop, uh, desktop. It's going to be the last user, and we don't want um, Dante's, which is that one. Where is we can just go to the make a new one, and I'll do Nathan Peabody. You can make your own new folder name there. I hit enter, OK. And then I'm going to save it to that. Then I'm going to go to my Z stack above it. And I'm going to export the Z stack too as a movie. So I'm going to export this as a MP4 movie. You could do QuickTime or AVI or whatever, but MP4 works well. And I'm going to export that to the same folder. OK. Now let's go see what I did. So go back to my folder. Where's my new folder? Nathan Peabody is right here. I'll pull it out this. It has two things in here. One is the TIFF file, which is that, which we just did. Okay. And it's only 512 by 512. Or no, that may have been 1024. It's not very big. And then there's the movie. Uh, asking me for these. You may not get this, but here is the movie. And it basically plays through the play again. It basically plays through the different Z stacks that you made, the different optical sectioning. There were 10 of them. Okay. So that's the basic gist of getting a GFP thing. And you can do that with triple staining. Um, and this is the desktop for all the images that I would then transport to my USB drive. But the raw images are saved on the D drive, which is here. When you go to this, this is all being saved on the D drive. And then I exported it to a folder on the desktop. And that is how to set up GFP, how to get a Z stack, how to export a TIFF, and export a movie. I hope it's easy for you to do. Thank you.